Now, just just tell us a bit about the the current situation with rhino poaching in South Africa. I mean, is it on the decline? Um, is it getting worse? Um, various methods have been introduced. I know that this, um, you know, poisoning the horn horn method. There's been a lot of controversy about whether or not that works. I mean, what are, what, what are your thoughts on that? I definitely think, from whether people want to hear it or not, I think our government needs to get more involved. Mm. Number one, because unfortunately we're very in bed with the Chinese government, and a lot of us, a lot of the horn and the illegal trade goes mm. over to China, Thailand, and the, and the and the Asian countries. So. We really need to put a foot down as a country and say mm. we are South African. Look after something that is South African. Um, regarding different methods of how people of of, of trying to stop or hinder or which, whichever mm. way you look at it, I don't know whether the horn poisoning is necessarily that good. Um, just I think subsequently people have come out with a study that it actually doesn't really do anything and it just mm. more is just colouring the horn and if mm. it does work every 18 months you have to redo it which is a lot of stress for the animals mm. which again there's no point putting animals through stress if you're trying to save them so I think the biggest thing is really the government and we need to control our borders better we need to just like I don't know I think our army is not really doing much, so mm. maybe instead of a big arms deal, we could do a big rhino deal and just look after our animal, all our animals, especially the elephants are also in big big trouble too. Mm. So it's a sad thing, that ho which I hopefully won't happen, that one day our grandchildren won't see our, our animal or part of our big five, which is, which is quite a sad thing to think about. Mm. I mean, it's going back to the, the, the poisoning, the, the horn method. Um, obviously, certain um, I think the thinking mm. behind is that certain game farms, etc., will employ that method, and then poachers will know, okay, these horns are mm. poisoned. But surely, a poacher has to shoot the animal first to find out whether the the horn is poisoned or not. Yeah, so, I mean, is that really isn't again? It's it's yeah. They don't really know how mm. it works. Like they just see rhinos in the area, easy to target, to take yeah. them out. And I mean, I actually watched a friend's video today, funny enough, of when she went up. Um, I think she was in the Kruger, and she was within. 15 meters mm. in a in a um, one of the um, the vehicles, they you can get so close to them because they're, they're blind. They really can't see. Mm. So they can they know you're there, but they they don't they can't see. You. So mm. you can get really close. I mean, when I was in KwaZulu Natal with um, in one of, with with the charity, actually we we walked through the bush on foot, which was amazing. Mm. And we got probably about not even 10 meters away behind a tree, which was quite scary, but. You can literally walk up to them and they just don't know you're there. So it's a really easy animal to, to hit. Mm. And it's just a very sad thing that we don't do more. Um, and like I asked you earlier, mm. is the poaching situation improving or not? And is it black rhinos or white rhinos that are more endangered? Um, what are the stats there? Black rhinos um, are definitely more endangered. Um, it, it, it's just, I don't know, it's just a, I don't know, it just really upsets me because like, I don't think anything is improving. So the numbers are going. I mean, when I first looked, at, when I first started doing everything, I think by like April or May, May when I did the skydive, 374 had died. Last year, 1,004 died. Just to do the comparison of, mm. of how much more each run. I mean, if it goes on the trend of the way it's going now, it's going to be above a thousand. Um, I do know that there are a lot of. I mean, there are a lot of runners in reserves, and no one knows the numbers of them. Mm. So. There could be a lot more than I think people like maybe they are led to believe, but it's still we can't have. I mean, a, a thousand and four rhinos is ridiculous in a mm. year because like, we should do more. Like yeah. everyone should do more. And, and I, I think the sad thing about it is we're in the city. Like so, this is one of my biggest things. I one of my challenges that I faced was we're in the city. No one really it's out of sight, out of mind. No one really sees what's going on. No one mm. understands, and it's basically a bush in the war. And there's not that many people protecting it. So, and the guys who are coming in, it's all part of drugs. All the illegal trades, basically, mm. are taking this market because it's such a high profit margin. So they're organized. They often go into the game reserves at dusk, hit the animal, and they're out within an hour and a half. So how do you find someone in thick bush in hectares mm. and hectares of land and then expect us to win the war on that when we mm. can't because we don't have the manpower? I mean, are you tempted to become, become more hands-on and, 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 and try and catch poachers? Um, I have actually mentioned a few times when I've gone up, I've, I've joined up with the AP units, which is the anti-poaching units, and I've heard some, some interesting stories. Um, I'll leave it at, 
interesting stories. <laughs> um, uh, but I definitely would like to get more hands on. I've said them a few times and the, mm. uh, of how I can maybe get more involved and, and, and be more of an actual hands on presence opposed to just always trying to like, because I said like everything I do is not like, it's definitely not about me. I know you need a person to, to drive a lot of these activities that you do and it is all fun and I do enjoy it, but I w would like to do more physically to actually hands on help mm. um, the rhinos, definitely.